Hey guys, so um, Justin the Breck reminded me that today is Tuesday and I did not do a video already and he was asking me, what are you doing it on? So uh, it's pretty simple. Today we're going to talk habits and, around nutrition and can it really be that easy to fix your nutrition by just editing some habits? Um, the answer is Yes, but it takes a lot of time, okay? So probably, let me, let me I always like to throw spoilers in there. So the, so the big spoiler is this. If you want to simply lose weight, consume less and sweat. I mean, it's pretty easy, right? So um, you can do other things. Like I, I think I've said this before. Hey, Jay, um, that uh, uh, I was a wrestler growing up and I could lose 15 pounds, or I, not me. Um, I've seen young men that had no weight to lose, lose 15 pounds in one day. As a matter of fact, it'd be about three hours and they'd lose 15 pounds. It's a great way to kill yourself, so don't do it. But there are ways if you're simply trying to lose weight that, that compress that time frame, but are certainly unhealthy for you and don't work. So it really depends. If you want to lose weight quick because you got to get into a wedding dress tomorrow or the next day, yeah, there's things you can do, but you may not be able to walk down the aisle because you're just so dehydrated or messed up. So maybe don't do that. But if you've got time on your side, right? So it took you, I don't know, how long did it take you to get to where you are? So how old are you? Or when did your bad habits start? And how long did it take you to get there? Can we use that same amount of time to get to undo it? Then the answer is yes. There are some really easy things that you can do that will um, help you and compound over time to get you there, right? So I'm going to tell you some of the habits that I use and how it works for me. So I'm going to relate it in a little bit more of a real time, you know, how, how would this work? What's the difference between, so I guess let me back that up. There's a couple ways you can do work on your nutrition. One is habits. One is you can count. So log everything, use like macro or, or pay, uh, pay, PayPal, use PayPal. That's a great way. Um, I guess if you track your spending on food, that is a good way. I don't know. But um, uh, not PayPal. Fit, my Fitness Pal and uh, log all your stuff. I mean, My Fitness Pal is pretty dang cool. You can just scan the barcode and it pops all that craziness in there for you, right? That's if you're eating barcoded stuff, right? There's, I, I suppose you can even do like here's a dish and it's probably in there as well. But anyway, so um, habits, tracking, and um, there's a, uh, the third one is a, a, a partic particular meal prep. So if you don't like to really fix your habits and you don't really want to count and, you know, be on your own, then you can buy portions like a, a Jenny Craig or, I mean, Weight Watchers, whatever. That thing, there's some counseling that goes with it, which is great. I'm always going to tell you if you really want to win, get a mentor, dang it. The, the, you're going to pay them to tell you the things that they don't want to hear because you're paying them. They're going to say, hey, look, I mean, eating sugar every night is probably bad. You should stop doing that. And you're going to be like, dang it, right? So they're like the best friend you never had because, well, you're paying for them. So that's, I, you're paying for their advice and they're going to give it to you whether you like it or not. So it's a great way to go. Okay, so habit-based. It does take longer for habit-based stuff to typically pan out. But if it takes you longer to get there, Typically, it's going to last longer and work longer for you, so into your 90s, rather than, I mean, how many of you guys raise your hand, did a diet, and you lost 10 pounds in, I don't know, a month, a month and a half, whatever, and then when you're done, you're off, and you go into the next thing, you gain 12 pounds. You're like, well, that sucks. I lost it and got it, right? Because you're not building a habit. You're, uh, well, there's a lot of stuff you can look at that simply doesn't work. Cramming for an exam. Yeah, it kind of works, but do you really know any of that stuff later? Yeah, it went in, went out, you could do it for the test. But if you study every night, little by little over time, when you're older, you're like, ah, I sort of remember the Pythagorean theorem. It's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Unless you're watching um, uh, Wizard of Oz, when the Tin Man gets his brain, he actually says it incorrectly, which is crazy, because that's kind of the point. So he, he didn't get it. So uh, uh, Jamie Armenta, that was for you. These tangents... Are brought to you by Coach Jamie. But um, okay, so <clears throat> a habit for me, the, and why I like habits. I decided that, out of all of the nutrition plans out there, the one thing that they all have in common is, except for th the Eat More Sugar plan, all of them say, stop eating sugar. Don't eat so much sugar. Don't drink sugar. Stop sugar, right? Hey, Michael. And uh, so, don't eat sugar. Yeah, if you want to ask stuff, I don't know if... I don't know if I can see it. Let me see if I can make 
Watch live video, see if I can make it come up. No, I don't think I can. So maybe if you type something, maybe it pops up. I'm not sure how this works on my phone. I should be using my computer, but I'm using my phone. So um, anyway, so I did the, okay, I'm just gonna stop eating sugar. One, all of them say it's bad for you. Two, they say cancer may actually eat sugar and that's how it takes root a hold or whatever. So I'm like, fine, whatever. I'm gonna try this no sugar thing. So that's just for me. So the habit was stop eating sugar. So my um, buddy, Justin and I were actually on the phone talking about this and he's like, well, I know you didn't do it all at once. So a fun story is to actually see what you did. You didn't just go, find no sugar, I'm reading every label and blah, right? It was, it's a habit and you start slowly. So you're like, okay, a donut has sugar. I'm just not gonna eat that. Okay. And then I went and got, um, went to a Longhorns with the kids and they're like, hey, here's your sweet potato with cinnamon and sugar. I'm like, Oh yeah, the sweet potato has sugar. So I'm like, okay, let me redo that. Can I just do cinnamon or can I just do butter, right? So the first thing is take out the obvious. I'm not going to drink Coke, right? I'm not going to, well, do donuts, not do them, but you know what I mean. And I'm not gonna put sugar on things. So just the obvious things are first. What's obvious out there? I'm going to drink this water bottle. It's got sugar in it. No, I'm not going to because it says, well, this is a water bottle, but whatever, that fruit drink, right? I'm not gonna drink that. It's pretty much sugar. So you first go with the obvious. It's a habit. The first thing is I say to myself, I am a person who doesn't eat sugar. All right? Not, I'm trying to not eat sugar. I am a person who eats healthy, and I'm a person who doesn't eat sugar. So, okay, so what does that look like? Someone who doesn't eat sugar doesn't eat cookies. I'm like, all right, I don't eat cookies because it's got sugar in it. Crazy, right? Newsflash. So you start doing the obvious, and then it becomes a habit that you are having fun with, and it it's kind of interesting too. It also reduces your choices in the day, which is weirdly freeing. When you have less choices to worry about, you look at that menu and you're like, half the things I can't eat, I'll take meat and veggies, right? So you create that habit, you find the obvious stuff, and then you sort of make it a game where you're reading labels and looking, right? So you're looking for the less obvious stuff. So for me, it became, um, I pick something up and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the label and I'm like, wow, you know, it says palm fruit sugar cane. I'm like, I guess that's sugar. I probably shouldn't eat that, right? So weirdly, mustard had sugar in it. You could buy mustard that doesn't, and you could buy it that does. So the more expensive one that's organic had sugar in it because organic is typically gross, right? And so they put sugar in it to make it taste better. So I went with French's, or French's, French, uh, uh, Heinz, whatever. The uh, I think it's French's mustard, whatever, um, which is basically four ingredients. It's like you know, vinegar, mustard seed, uh, awesomeness and love, right? That's what mustard has in it. I don't eat ketchup because the base ingredient for ketchup is sugar. So it's like uh, tomato paste, sugar, water, sugar, tomato paste, sugar, paprika, sugar, right? That's like in there eight times with different names. So you start reading labels and make it kind of fun. You're like, well, what on this table could I possibly eat? Then you start checking it out. So the habit is already ingrained. I am a healthy eater. You change your mindset, not or your, your, your mindset, not I don't eat sugar. It's I am a healthy person. I eat healthy. What does a healthy person eat? And that healthy person inside of me avoids sugar. So what does that look like? So I'm building that habit up. Now I'm reading labels. And then it becomes kind of a game. What else do I eat? And this is like months later. And I'm, I think right now I'm two years and a couple months into not eating sugar and grain. But um, so uh, the it becomes more of a, of, a, of a game. It's like gamification of it. I'm looking on the table, right? And I'm looking at different things. What, what I, I'm reading all the labels and going, oh man, that's a fancy word for sugar. So for me also, it wasn't just sugar, it was sweetness because I wanted to get the sweetness off my tongue. So I went for, you know, not, no sweet flavor. So no uh, uh, dectrose, no NutraSweet, no um, honey, no whatever, right? And so, I, and, and you may think, well, do you eat grapes? That has sugar in it. Actually, the answer is yes, I would eat grapes, but they're too sweet, so I don't. So it's weird. Some things are now so sweet, I'm like, it just makes my stomach hurt. I can't even eat that. Blueberries, weirdly, they doesn't taste sour. It They taste sweet. Even just thinking of those right now, I'm getting, got to spit, so it's too much. I mean, it makes my, the, the glands juice, but Take that habit and you expand it and you make it easy over time, right? And not, uh, some of the habits that are good for you that you would, so let me back up a little bit. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is eating out and freedom and choices and spices and stuff, but I'm going to break from that. Our gym is doing a habits-based nutrition 
challenge, and this, I mean, yeah, you can do the challenge, but really it's to help you understand what are some of the gold standard habits, because there are some out there, and how do I put those into my life, right? So we're gonna talk habits, we're gonna mostly talk about some preset habits, but then we'll also dive into a little bit of your psyche and why you do it, and the weird thing is, you, your, your head and your heart are tied to food, something dramatically, and I, that's just how it is, and it was tough for me to get away from some of the foods, and the habits, like I drink a lot of tea, which is bad for my teeth, I suppose, but tea, black tea, has nothing in it, and it keeps me away from everything else. So I'll just visit the dentist a little bit more often in order to have a better habit of, I don't drink stuff. So I, if you ever read the book, Power of Habit or Atomic Habit, it's about the, the, the cue, the ritual, I can't say it, the cue, the ritual, and the reward. So the cue is I'd like to have something that's not water all the time, Enter tea. I've changed the ritual. I still have the cue. I'd like to drink, but it's tea now. And the reward is, well, in this case, it's just hot and bitter like me. No, it's hot and fun. I don't know. Um, uh, cold and bitter. That'd be more. Uh, it, it's just something to shortcut or, or snip out or whatever that habit loop, right? Something different, but we'll get into those. We'll also dig a little bit into here and here to help you guys identify why you do what you do. But some easy ones are water. Drink water. I mean, I've got, I got um, um, uh, 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 Karen water right here. I've got some, I'm sorry, I got friends in Karen. I shouldn't say that. I got my Fiji water. Um, is it better than others? I don't know, but it's from Fiji. So it makes me feel like I'm in the ocean. I, I don't know. So that's what I've got. I drink some electrolyte water, other stuff, but it's basically water. Drink water. Do you drink enough water? So the biggest answer for everyone on the planet is no. Well, maybe not everybody. I think uh, uh, Coach Jessica has this really big water bottle. She probably drinks enough water, but nobody else on the planet besides Coach Jessica drinks enough water. So drink water, when? Well, if you're 40 or over and you're a guy, don't drink a lot of water before bed because, right? Don't do that. So there also becomes like some meal timing prep stuff that gives us into this, right? So if you have issues with falling asleep or if you feel like I'm gaining weight when I eat, it could be when you eat, which is weird. Why? The, the, the timing of your meal, there's some gold standards in that, right? Especially around working out or other items or when the sweet tongue comes on to you, you're like, what should I do, right? There's some habits around that that you can use to, to cut that habit loop or to short circuit it into something else, right? So will you lose 40 pounds in, in this six week habit based challenge? No, but you will put yourself on a upward and to the right slow slope of positive, is that to the left? I don't know, this thing I think changes the direction. To me, this is my right hand, but I think it's your left hand, so I think it doesn't do it you know, correct. Anyway, so you go up and to the right um, slowly with sustainable progress, and you'll be able to do that forever, right? If you do it quickly, you're never gonna be able to do that. So don't do it quickly, do it slow, change your habits and let that compounding effect over time take place. Okay, so another easy one could be supplements. Are you deficient in something that's cueing you to need the other thing? The answer is probably yes. So in that case, we don't do blood work, but um, like uh, Yancey Stewart over at Health Sprout, Dr. Eric's Health Sprout, does do blood tests, and it's a great way to just do a check. Like, hey, what am I missing and what's going on? It could be in your blood work. Get that checked. Um, anyway, Inside the nutrition challenge, there'll be uh, some rewards or some, you know, hey, you won, right? But there's gonna be many challenges, so little things you can do inside the overall challenge. But the big win is for you to find at least one habit that you can keep going forever, because that habit will compound. And then the win for me for you is to know that you did something and find the second habit. Okay, so let me back up into my story of no sugar. I picked it. Do I suggest that for you guys? Actually, yes, I'd say it for everybody, but it is really tough to do until you start flexing willpower and creating some fun habit and breaking those the, the habit loop. It's really dang tough because they took fat out of stuff and said, let's put sugar in to make it taste good so your tongue is super acclimated to super sweet stuff. So I, I what do we have the other day? I had some um, cashews and I said, it's weird. These cashews are kind of sweet. I suspect everything has a little bit of sweetness in it, even if they can't measure it, but I can feel it on this uh, palate because I don't eat sugar intentionally. So 
Let me back that up a little bit and say, I also don't spice things up intentionally. So, yep, I pretty much eat food in the way that it came out, unless somebody doctors it up for me. So a hamburger is just a piece of beef. I guess I guess suppose if you get a steak or something, they may put their spicy stuff on it. That's totally fine for me. But I don't use salt and pepper, um, unless it's in a song, and uh, you gotta have gray hair to maybe know them. But um, uh, I don't use a lot of spices because food tastes like food to me and I'm enjoying the way food tastes. I don't put dressing on my salad, not because I'm actually looking for that health aspect. I, I, I like it, but I just don't like dressing. It's too much of an explosion on my taste. And I actually like the way the vegetables taste, which when you get out of sweet, it really changes the way the world tastes for you. But that sounds weird. The way the, way the world, the way f stuff that you put in your mouth tastes food. Um, okay. The other one is, uh, uh, the freedom when you go out to eat. So can you go out to eat when you don't eat bread or sugar? You certainly can. One of my favorite places to go is Longhorns because I can get steak, a sweet potato. I know it says the word sweet in it, but look it up. I put butter and butter on it. And then I'll usually get, um, their salad with double toppings, or I'll get broccoli without their, uh, uh, they do some sort of like, um, uh, dressing butter on it. So I don't do that. I just put more butter on it. So <laughs> the long-term effects of me doing this fat butter does not make you fat. Look in the camera. It doesn't make you fat. I eat a bucket load of fat every day. And you, many people look at what I put in my smoothies and go, good Lord, you're going to die. I went to Yancey and she said, man, you're boring. Your tests are all fine. Get out of here. So I was good. Um, so it doesn't do what you think it does if you take sugar and bread out, but that's for me. So can you eat when you go out? The answer is yes. Um, I typically do a lot of uh, hamburger salad type stuff or chicken -y salad -y stuff. I don't typically order a chicken salad. Um, uh, I'll order, like when we go to Guston's, which I love that place, I'll get their uh, uh, bison burger and then full garden, add an egg, add, add avocado, no bun. And so basically it's just got a meat salad, which is perfectly good for me with sweet potatoes, no sugar, or sugar, ugh, sugar or cinnamon on it. I think they know what I ordered. They don't even really ask anymore. They're like, oh yeah, two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. I'm like, yes, I'll take it. So it's weirdly freeing. I don't have to have a, a choice dilemma there. And I think it's, there's a term for it. And I keep forgetting what it is. Uh, shark tanking your, your, uh, um, your choices. I don't, it's not shark tanking. That's a TV show or something. Hey, no. And, uh, so, uh, 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 anyway, you can go out and eat and it does actually free you up to have fun with food, but you have to kind of w look at what are the sauces and things they're putting on stuff, right? So typically if they're saying, Hey, it comes with this great sauce. I say, Hey, can you put it on the side and I'll put it on if I like it. Um, so yes, you can eat out, um, and it, it's weirdly, it does limit your choices, but it frees you up tremendously. I never have anxiety over what I should get or where we should go. Cause I always know pretty much what I'm going to eat. Um, anyway, habits are one of the best ways to affect great change in your life. T typically, well, if you listen to an old one, it's goals and you know, lifetime goals. What, what are you going to say about me when I'm dead? That's Stephen Covey's thing. Stole it from him. And then you build goals out of that. And then the habits are what you do to reach that goal. I tell my soccer kids, you should juggle. Why? Because you want to be a good soccer player. So the goal, what they want to say when they're done with soccer was, man, she was good. Well, how do you get good? Play, get your foot into the game. What's a good thing to do? Juggle. Juggling sucks and it's boring. Plain and simple. The difference between the Olympic athlete isn't the degree to what, or th what they do in kind is what they do in that degree, or I'm, I'm butchering that. They do the same things we do, so that what they do, the kind of things they do is the same. The degree to which they do it is different, right? So it does differ in degree, but that Olympian mastered the mundane. It totally sucks to juggle for 15 minutes every day, unless you can gamify it, but the rewards are massive, right? So how do you build a habit in that? You just say, hey, I am a great soccer player. Soccer players have awesome footwork. I will juggle 15 minutes every day because I am an awesome soccer player. So now you start creating those habit loops, right? When I get home from school, I'm gonna go outside. The first thing I'm gonna do is juggle because it's light and it's not too cold or whatever, right? So then you start setting up a timing. So timing is important to a habit. That cue, whatever it is, I just got home, then the uh, ritual and the reward, right? And then magnify that reward. Man, 
Did you see me at soccer today? I tell my kids every time if the goalie kicks it and one of my girls catches it on her foot on the way down and then goes, I'm like, what? And we don't even talk about who scored. I talk about who just had that crazy footwork right there and they love it, right? So celebrate when that success comes. So habits are a great easy way that don't involve a lot. I mean, if you're busy with life, who can track all that stuff? I, I'm not saying don't track it. Journaling is awesome. Test and measure, right? That's what we do in CrossFit. But habits are a great way to affect here and here, your head and heart. Can you see heart? It's heart over there. I don't know where it ever, right? And gives you a slow, long trajectory for change that'll compound over time to reap massive rewards. That sounds pretty damn awesome. So I'll post a link if you want to sign up. We're not, uh, there is a, a, a limit to the number of people we can take for this habits-based nutrition, but we're happy to help whoever needs to be helped. You don't even have to be local. All right, y'all take care.